In this video, we are going to use the PyClaw Python package for hyperbolic partial differential equations to solve the 1D attraction equation, such that you can then step through the solution of a profile moving to the right. And we will do so in roughly 100 lines of code. So let's get started. Hi and welcome to this new video. As said in the intro, we will use the PyClaw package in Python to solve the 1D attraction equation. This equation is given here. It's a partial differential equation and it's the prototype equation for any hyperbolic transport equation. The PyClaw package allows us to use so-called Riemann solver and a finite volume discretization to solve this equation given some initial conditions and boundary conditions as well as the one parameter of the solution, which is the advection speed u that appears in front of the spatial derivative. We also have q here, which is our conserved quantity. You can, for instance, think of it as some sort of a density moving along a river. And we want to solve this advection equation for the initial condition of this step profile that we have here. So we have some interval in x where our solution is one, and on the other parts of the interval, it's zero. And we are considering a domain that is stretching from x equals 0 to x equals 1. And we will enforce periodic boundary conditions on the right and the left corner, meaning that whatever flows over the right domain boundary re-enters from the left. And the approach in PyClaw works as following. So we first instantiate a solver from the claw pack package and attach a Riemann solver. We will then in a second step define a finite volume mesh, which means that we subdivide our domain into finite cells throughout which we assume that the solution is constant. And at the cell boundaries, we will have a discontinuity. And if we then want to propagate our solution over time, we have to figure out how this discontinuity evolves according to the PDE. In a nutshell, that is what our Riemann solver is doing. But here we will just be using it as some sort of a black box. In the first step, we also have to include the boundary conditions. When we then have our finite volume mesh after the second step, we can instantiate fields on the mesh. Here, this is the conserved quantity Q. Think of it as the density of a pollutant in a river. Then we have to prescribe this initial condition, so this step profile here basically. And then we set the problem specific parameters. Here it is just the attraction speed. And then we instantiate a controller object which takes care of the time integration. And then we let it run. And in the end, we want to visualize it. Then let's start by first importing all the necessary packages. So we need the PyClaw package. So we do from claw pack. By the way, claw stands for conservative laws. We import the PyClaw, which then means Python conservative laws probably. And then we also need the collection of Riemann solvers. So we say from claw pack import Riemann. And then we also need NumPy for some simple computation. So import NumPy SNP. Then let's define a main function and leave it empty for a second. And then we create a main switch. So say if name equals main and then our function is only executed when we run this file in the python interpreter well then let's follow the steps so we had the first step which was to define the finite volume solver to be used with um with a riemann solver or from the collection of riemann solvers so this works as following so we create a solver object and say this one is pyclaw.clawsolver1d because we are solving a one-dimensional problem in space. And then we can attach a Riemann solver to it by saying Riemann.advection1d. Then let's use the solver object in order to attach the boundary conditions. So we say solver.bc lower, the lower boundary condition, which refers to the left corner of our domain and this is a list so we just have one boundary condition so we take the zero of entry of the list and say this one is pyclaw.bc.periodic and then for the solver bc upper which is the right boundary condition also the zero of entry we do pyclaw.bc.periodic as well then the next step is to define our finite volume mesh so Step number two, define the mesh. For this, we will first 
make sure we get the dimensions right. So I will say x dimension is equal to pyclaw dot dimension. So we can define the extent of the domain. It goes from zero to one and we want a hundred cells. You can adapt this if you want. And then we can define the domain according to pyclaw dot domain on the x dimension. This domain then represents our finite volume mesh and we can use this definition in order to instantiate quantities that are associated with the average values on the cells. I will call this step number three. So we will instantiate a solution field on the mesh. So we say solution equals pyclaw dot solution on the domain, but we also have to define the number of equations, or in other words, the decrees of freedom of the solution. So we say solver dot num equations, and this is the call to create the solution object. Now the solution object is not associated with any value. So if we were to integrate it over time now, there would be just a zero solution, which is not what we want. So we have to prescribe an initial state. Let's say that is step four. So prescribe initial state. For this, we have to extract the state from our solution by saying state is solution dot state. Then we have to get the coordinates from our solution or from our mesh on which the solution is defined. And we get that by saying state dot grid dot p centers. And here you see again that we are using a finite volume discretization, in particular one that is cell centered. So the average quantity on the cell is saved in the center of the cell. So then if we want to associate a quantity with this cell, we need to know where it is located in order to then prescribe this step initial condition. And this is basically this P centers, and this could potentially have multiple dimensions, but we are just working in one dimension here. So we take the zero of entry, and then I will call the return of this the cell center coordinates. And then we can use the cell center coordinates to prescribe our initial condition by saying that the state dot Q and the Q here in PyClaw always refers to the conserved quantity. And we want to prescribe the zero of conserved quantity and we want to prescribe it at all points in the mesh or basically in all points that we have available for us or in other words, all cell centers. And for this, we need to do some sort of a switch. We need to say when the cell center is in this interval, we want to have it as one. And if it is outside of the interval, we want to have it as zero. And we can conveniently do that by using numpy.where, which is a vectorized switch. And it first has a condition. For this, we will check whether the cell center coordinates are greater than 0.2 and the cell center coordinates have to be smaller than 0.4, which basically means for all the cell center coordinates that lie in the interval from 0.2 to 0.4, we want to associate the value one with it and outside of that a zero. And here I just selected these two points. Feel free to adapt that if you like. And this is already fine for prescribing the initial condition. We can then move on to step number five, which will be assigning the problem specific parameters. So assign problem specific parameters. And here, just to remind yourself, the U that we're using, this one refers to the advection speed, or in other words, how fast this step is moving to the right. And for this, we can say state dot problem data. And this problem data is a dictionary. And here you have to be a little bit careful, depending on the problem that you're solving, this has particular names, but you can find the names for these parameters in the documentation of PyClaw. And even if you don't match the names, it will complain and you will get an error that you didn't assign a certain parameter. Anyways, so this one is U and we want to have it as 1.0, so a unit advection speed. And then step number six is to instantiate our controller. And so we say the controller takes care of the time integration, which means selecting an appropriate time step and so on and so forth. 
For this, we create the controller by saying the controller is pyclaw.controller. And then we say controller.solution equals the solution field. So we attach it as an attribute to this instantiated object. And we say controller.solver is the solver that we want to use. And then we also have to define our final time. So t final is one. And if we run the simulation for one second with a speed of one meters per second over a domain which is one meters long and has periodic boundary conditions, we expect the solution to return to the same point after that time. Let's see if that does. For this, we have to run the controller. So this is number seven, run and visualize. So we do controller.run, which does the simulation. And then PyClaw has a handy routine in order to visualize this beautifully for us by saying pyclaw.plot.interactiveplot. And then we should be good to go. Let's see if we made any mistakes. So I will first bring up the terminal here and then we can just execute python pyclaw at vection 1d and let's see that seems fine so it is printing out an info here saying that it computed solutions at some intermediary time steps that it has selected or that was the default value and if you also take a look at the files that you can access with this code you see that it has created a log file which is essentially a more detailed information on what it is printing out in a terminal and it's also creating an subdirectory underscore output where it is saving the values of the solution at the certain time, which we can then later on use to visualize. So it's basically how it is writing it out to disk. So I will close the file explorer and the PyClaw log. And then if we bring that up, we see that it is now entering this interactive visualization mode. And it's first asking us the number of spatial dimensions. I will just enter user default and I will also start at zero frame. And then it will bring up the plot. I will just quickly put that into the foreground. And here we see the values at our mesh. So we have the step in between 0 0.2 and 0 0.4. Otherwise we're zero and we are at time zero. And then if you hit enter or you just do N for next, it advances and we see the center has moved from 0.3 to 0.4, a little bit to the right. And we can continue there, move more to the right, and we see, well, there's this point where it's, where it's then reaching the boundary. So due to the periodicity, it is moving over the boundary, re-entering from the left. So let's continue. And then we are back at one, and we see our center is again approximately at 0.3. But what we see is, especially if we compare that with the initial profile, so we see that we had kind of like this rather high discontinuity there, and here it somehow smoothed out. And that's a natural property of solving advection problems, or what means natural, but it's a numerical issue of so-called artificial diffusivity. So in that case, we are using an approach with the Riemann solver, which can be a bit diffusive which means that it is smearing out these discontinuities which you are seeing here. And if you were to integrate it for longer time, you would also see a stronger diffusion happening there. You can avoid this by using higher order methods or methods with lower diffusivity, but it's just an inevitable consequence of solving these advection problems on a computer. If you hit enter again, then it will close the plot, but you can also use P to go to the previous frame. So going backward in time, play around and you also see if we go backwards in time we kind of restore the discontinuity as the diffusion is also happening over time. That's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. You can download the source code file from the video description and play around with the parameters. Also watch out for the next videos where we go over the PyClaw package in more detail and also look at other stovers for instance, for the Euler equations and the Navier-Stokes equations. If you enjoyed this video, then please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. I would extremely appreciate this. Here you will now see similar videos and I hope to see you in the next one.